This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Visit CuriosityStream.com slash NameExplain and use the code NameExplain for 30 days free. You will also get the chance to win a free iPhone 11 Pro Max 250GB. To enter, all you have to do is again use the code NameExplain. Winner will be announced on Monday 25th. TNCs apply. Also, you can sign up for free 30 days and sign out again if you don't like it. Crazy scientist turns himself into some kind of a monster. Four mechanical arms welded right onto his body. <laughs> Guy named Otto Octavius winds up with eight limbs. What are the odds? It's so often we see works of fiction with characters that have fitting names to what they do in life. Great examples of this are with the likes of Dash from The Incredibles and Remus Lupin from Harry Potter as we mentioned a few videos ago. One of the earliest examples of this seems to come from John Bunyan's 1678 book Pilgrim's Progress. This book included the characters of Mr. Talkative and Mr. Worldly Wiseman, who I'm sure you can imagine what they are like as people. Though this concept of characters that have names that fit their personality slash what they do came to its logical peak in the 1970s with Roger Hart Hargreaves, Mr. Men and Little Miss books. You know just from their names how jacked Mr. Strong is, how optimistic Mr. Happy is, how mischievous Little Miss Naughty is, and how contagious Mr. Sneeze is. It makes sense as to why creators of these characters would give them such fitting names. It's a really playful use of language and it can help audiences quickly understand what a character is going to be like simply from their names. Though it's kind of weird when you start to think about it, as JJJ commented on. I mentioned in the Harry Potter video how if your parents gave you a name like Remus Lupin, they must be expected you to be bit by a werewolf or something. Much like with Dash from The Incredibles, it seems in The Incredibles universe that kids don't get their powers till they're a bit older. So did they name him Dash and luckily enough he gained super speed powers or something? Nevertheless, these are just works of fiction that I'm thinking way too much about. When we hear that a fictional character who's super fast is called Dash, we can just logically think that their creator named them that to fit with their power and carry on with our day, saving the knowledge that these are just fictional characters and that no one in real life would have a name like this that so weirdly fits what they do. Except, there's the slight issue about the fastest man on earth, whose name is Usain Bolt. No, this isn't some kind of stage name or anything like that. The fastest man on the planet literally has the surname Bolt, a word synonymous with fast, which is just a bit weird. However, Mr. Bolt isn't the only example of someone who has a name that fits what they do slash what they are like. You can find all kinds of examples of people with names that fit what they do. Buzzfeed have a listicle of 21 people who are born to do their jobs, including the firefighter Les McBurney, a deli manager called Laura Ham, the author of the complete Riggers reference handbook Mike Riggs, a lawyer named Jonathan Law, and of course Dr. Harry C. Beaver, a gynecologist. I can't really comment on the validity of these names, but they're pretty fun nonetheless. Away from BuzzFeed, we have some more valid sources of information on these kinds of names, and people with names like this that are in the public eye. A great example is Thomas Crapper, who helped pioneer the flushing toilet. His surname was a word for a toilet before he helped shape toilets, however. Then we also have Margaret Court, who was very good on the tennis court, Chris Moneymaker, the winner of the 2000 2003 World Series of Poker Championship, Igor Judge, former judge and former Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales, poet William Wordsworth, the vicar Michael Vickers, neurologist Russell Brain, Reverend presenter Sue Blizzard, president of Nintendo of America Doug Bowser, bassist of the band Camel Colin Bass, football player Michael Ball, and one of my favourites prison reformer Francis Crook. This name of Francis actually means freedom, so this prison reformer's full name could be seen as meaning freedom for crooks, which is just crazily fitting. These just a few examples but believe me there are way more out there. It's easy to just sit back and chuckle at these fitting names. In fact we can see that people have simply written articles about these sorts of names and called it a day. I however don't want this video to be just enough reason to gawk at these fun names. What I want to know is if there is any more to these instances of people having names that tie into what they do or what they are like. Or are they simply coincidences? Well some people think yes. Some people think these names are way more than just big old quinky dinks. In fact names like this have a name unto themselves. Apteronym. The word aptronym is a blending of the word apt, which means fitting or suitable, and the ever-present anim suffix we see so often with names for names of things, like with exonym, the name for a country outside the nation, and hydronym, the name for a body of water. This onym suffix comes from the Greek norma, which means name. So aptronym simply means apt name, as these names are very apt to the people with them. The reason the R is there is because it's also thought the word was born as an anagram for patronym, 
a word that derives from patronymic, meaning relating to the name of a father, aka a surname. The fact that the word aptronym could be made out of an anagram for another name for surnames is in of itself quite apt. However, the word has been seen without the R2 as just aptonym. This coining is credited to newspaper columnist Franklin P. Adams. It's believed he created the word sometime in the 1930s, but as to why exactly he needed this word, we aren't too sure. Maybe he was writing an article about it, or maybe he had just noticed this odd quote too and wanted a word for for it. Whatever the reason, the word aptronym is here in our lexicon now. Though while giving a name for these fitting names is all well and good, some people like to go even deeper. An actual theory has formed around these people with names that weirdly fit what they do, and it's called nominative determinism. This term was joined by John Hoyland. He was a writer for the British magazine New Scientist, and in a 1994 issue of the magazine, he wrote about this strange phenomenon. The example he used in his article were Daniel Snowman, writer of the book Pole Position, The Polar Regions and the Future of the planet, Richard Trench, writer of London Under London, A Subterranean Guide, and the names of the two authors of an article about incontinence from the British Journal of Urology, who were called, and I'm not making this up, J.W. Splat and D. Weedon. The general idea for nominative determinism is that people are subconsciously drawn to a profession that fits with their name. While Hoyland coined this term in 1994, the idea can date back further. In fact, the famous psychiatrist Carl Jung even spoke about this in his 1952 book, Sync Synchronicity. He wrote that sometimes quite grotesque coincidences between a man's name and his peculiarities can occur. Using Sigmund Freud's surname as an example, Freud means joy and this relates to his pleasure principle. He even thought about his own surname of Young and how it means young, which relates to his own idea of rebirth. Some have even talked about their own aptronyms and if they feel that nominative determinism has led them to where they are now. We mentioned earlier the prison reformer Frances Crooks. She has spoke about her name. I can remember my mother telling me what my first name meant as a very small child, because Francis means freedom. I've always had a sense of responsibility towards fighting for freedom. I realise that my name does mean free the criminals. However, she's also said that I don't think my surname has ever had any influence on me, but that's the one everybody laughs about. Church of England vicar Reverend Michael Vickers has also spoke on the subject, saying his name gets remarked on the whole time. And he also said that perhaps people are actually escaping from their name rather than moving towards their job which relates to the origin of so many English surnames. A lot of surnames are occupational, meaning they come from the occupations that people held in the past, e.g. the surname Baker would have been created because the initial people of the surname were Bakers, so it could be seen as people did jobs which created names in the past, and then once again people are drawn back to their namesake professions. Though, is there any truth to all this? Is nominative determinism something that actually exists? Well, in all honesty, there isn't an answer to this, hence why it's labelled as just a theory. A name theory! Thanks for- no, no, we aren't done yet. Part of me genuinely thinks that all these aptronyms are little more than just a massive coincidence. When you have a planet full of 7 billion people and only a finite amount of names and professions, these things are bound to align sometimes, and when they do align people really notice it. Yeah, there is a novelist called Francine Prose, but think about the hundreds of thousands of other novelists who have surnames that don't relate to writing at all and no one is picking up on it. However, nominative determinism is supposed to be a subconscious thing, so perhaps these people who say they weren't drawn to their profession because of their names really were but just don't know it themselves. However, if nominative determinism is a real thing, then we have some people who have really gone out their way to make sure their names do not line up what they do or who they are. And this is with inaptronyms, a word coined by Gene Weingarten in the Washington Post. This word means what you imagine it means, people with names that do not match up with them, making them rather ironic. In example, we have cricketer Peter Bowler, who is primarily a batsman, Jamie Sin, who in 1976 was made a cardinal, thus creating Cardinal Sin, and my favourite is a fact I've actually known for a long time but I've never had the chance to share with you all. The band ZZ Top are known for their long beards. In fact, all the members of the band have beards except for the drummer, whose name is Frank Beard. Though in more recent years he's actually grown one, which makes me incredibly sad. Nevertheless, that's the strange and weird world of aptronyms, inaptronyms and nominative determinism. I'd love to know if any of you guys have a name that is an aptronym or an inaptronym. And if so, what is it? I'd love to read some down in the comments. And if not, maybe you know some someone who does, like a teacher or a colleague. And I guess if you don't have an aptronym, then what would you have to do to have one? In example, my name is Patrick Foote. If I wanted my name to be an aptronym, I guess I could become a podiatrist. What would you have to do for your name to become an aptronym?
And of course, I want to give a huge thank you to CuriosityStream for sponsoring today's video. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service dedicated to learning, exploring, and understanding the world and things around us. It was founded by John Hendricks, the founder of the Discovery Channel, and has over 2,000 documentaries and non-fiction titles, including original programming featuring fantastic minds like David Attenborough and Stephen Hawking. The service covers a huge variety of topics from science and nature and technology to history and society. You guys will know as well as loving names, I enjoy history and I seriously can't wait to start binging their ancient history documentaries, which they have a huge amount of. And Curiosity Stream is available worldwide on many platforms including their web app, smart TVs, iOS, Android, Xbox One, Chromecast and Amazon Fire products, just to name a few. So as long as you have an internet connection, you can enjoy Curiosity Stream pretty much anywhere. Unlimited streaming access to Curiosity Stream starts from just $2.99 a month, but for name explain viewers, the first 30 days are completely free when you sign up via curiositystream.com slash name explain and use the code name explain. As well as a free 30 days, Curiosity Stream are awesome enough to be holding an iPhone 11 Pro Max giveaway too. To be in for a chance to win that, simply sign up for Curiosity Stream by visiting curiositystream.com slash name explain and use the code name explain. Thank you once again to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring today's video. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to update all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name you saying at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.